now to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the country's security forces say they've quashed an attempted coup on Sunday against President Felix Tshisekedi. An army spokesman said the U.S.-based Congolese man assumed to be behind the coup attempt, Christian Malanga, had been killed along with at least three others. He said that a number of Americans and a Congolese with British citizenship were involved in the plot. About 40 people have now been arrested. The group had tried to attack three ministerial residences before proceeding to the presidential palace. The African Union has condemned the failed coup attempt. The head of the AU Commission said he welcomed confirmation by Congolese security forces that the situation was under control. Well, from all this, I'm joined now on the line from Nairobi by Arise Africa correspondent Mark Bichachia. Good to see you, Mark. What's the latest on this coup attempt in the DRC? Well, the latest is that uh, other than just attacking the three ministerial residences, they also attacked the residence of the proposed uh, Speaker of uh, the Parliament. Uh, also joining Malanga was his son, Marcel Malanga, who, um, according to his social media, had been training for a situation such as this since a young age. So this uh, gives a sign of someone who has been aggrieved by the uh, Congolese uh, government, by its governance since uh, 2006 to 2012, when he became an army captain, having come back from the United States of America, and beyond that, running for office, being detained for uh, two weeks, and then being offered a position as a national youth chair, which he declined. Um, and then he went on to start businesses and uh, train people against corruption. But this particular coup, Charles, does have very strange uh, hallmarks, not just the presence of foreigners among the contingent that wanted to carry out this particular coup, but also the fact that they are not talking about a huge number of militants. Those arrested, depending on who you ask, are only being between 40 and uh, 50 people. So you wonder how 40 or 50 people not only uh, planned to, to do this coup, but also managed to, to take alleged video within uh, the state palace itself. So it, it is a strange story right down from uh, the people who have done it, the, 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 the perpetrators of it, Malanga himself. Uh, picturing himself as a sort of uh, uh, a freedom fighter uh, and doing so in, 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 in just a short while coming out of Utah, landing in Congo and, and, and doing so uh, in, on Facebook uh, live, even before he had secured the infrastructure that many coup supporters uh, assume you need to secure. So, for example, the broadcaster, uh, the military barracks, the, there are so many places. Uh, and, and even funnily enough, Charles, the other three ministerial position places that he went to, he actually did not find um, the proposed Prime Minister Judith uh, in her house. So how this coup was quite uh, executed and planned seems quite haphazard brazen, uh, but speaks to a deeper story to the person of Malanga. Yes, and it's very interesting indeed uh, listening to you talk about it. Um, and of course, as you said, lots of questions yet to be answered. I mean, we're not clear how they got into the country, how long they were there, or any information about the planning of this alleged coup. And, and in terms of the ringleader, uh, Christian Malanga, uh, you mentioned that he was a Congolese former army officer who left and formed his own armed group. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, he uh, joined the Congolese army in 2006, rose uh, to the rank of captain. In 2011, he tried to run as an independent candidate against um, the third ruling party led by uh, Kabila. And uh, beyond that, he uh, is quite known for being a business mogul, owning mining interests and uh, other interests in Mozambique and in the Congo and other places. Uh, he uh, formed his own political party um, at some point after uh, losing the election in 2011, which he believed was unfair. He then went ahead to form um, a government in exile in Brussels. 
to to uh, push his cause, uh, saying that he is tired of the corruption in Africa, particularly in the Congo, and he wants to see a change. And you're quite right. We do not know when exactly this became a coup plot rather than a political protest, uh, but it is so now. Um, he has uh, lost his life. His son has been arrested. And um, the little we, we, we can tell is this does not go uh, to uh, a large extent into the army of uh, the Congolese people. The, it seems like uh, the M23 rebels and the other rebel groups were not involved in this particular coup. So it seems to have come out of left of field. No one expected it. And it seems to have surprised uh, the security forces just as much as I think they themselves as perpetrators of this coup were quite surprised at how far they got with how little they had. And um, Mark, we, we've seen quite a few coups across the continent in recent years. I mean, is there a sense that the government in the DRC is particularly at risk? Well, the government in DRC is quite at risk, and the reason it is at risk is because of one, uh, President Sisekedi won the election in December. He has yet to form a new uh, cabinet uh, requiring that he reduces his numbers. This is his goal from 58 uh, 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 ministers to 45. He's uh, using the former prime minister uh, to sort of uh, hold forth with his ministers as he does tough negotiations. And these tough negotiations involve a number of things. First, they involve that the presidential coalition is over 300 parties that he has to satisfy. It is also have, has to address the issue of the security situation in the country with the other rebels across uh, the eastern part of the Congo, most especially. And then also the Congo is going, going through a very difficult economic time. Uh, and these lengthy periods where people negotiate for positions and there's uh, jostling here and there for, for positions is causing tension. So even the people they targeted, especially the person of the speaker. This is, again, a, a, a push uh, for them to take advantage of the fact that the Democratic Republic of Congo has yet to settle down uh, with its government. This is five months after they were elected. Mark, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we're up to date with that. Uh, Mark Bichachi is a Rise Africa correspondent. He was talking to me on the line from Nairobi.